they have been beaten by logistics struck with um, electric batons. They do this, the gangsters did this in front of other workers to threaten them. Um, you need to follow my word, otherwise you will struggle just like others. One indigenous youth, uh, he just died in Cambodia and uh, his family only see the photo of himself, uh, only his head, because maybe the rest of his body is already, the organ has been removed uh, forcefully. And the reason why they believe why he was killed was because he was put into a position of recruiting his friend. So the victim is Mr. A, and Mr. A was put into a position to recruit other friends. So, for example, his friend Mr. B was almost convinced to go to Cambodia with him. But in the last minute, Mr. A say, don't come, don't come here. And his family member believed this was the reason why he was killed. The situation is really, really severe. Um, we know cases of people being raped several times. We know cases of people being um, bitten severely. It's, it's really bad. We also know several victims, they actually finally escaped these kind of scamming camps by jumping off the window. So they jump off the window from, let's say, like fourth floor and they break their backbones, they break their chest. So even nowadays, if you, if you go to these type of criminal areas, you may even see the windows are, are very much like sealed. Who are the victims of this scam? Is there any kind of common demographic that unites them? Or, you know, or can anyone really become a victim to this kind of uh, section? So a lot of victims, a lot of them are actually really, really young, like in their early 20s and sometimes even below 20. So these are people who have uh, like limited social experience in the society and uh, also quite vulnerable. And, and some of them, you know, may also from not necessarily the best socioeconomic backgrounds. So also, for example, in Taiwan, a lot of indigenous uh, peoples are actually ended up becoming victims of this crime. In the very beginning, we'll say that a uh, very uh, vulnerable or uh, financial struggling persons, they, they are easy to pray to these places. But recently, I've learned that some educated or they got some skill, skilled people. If they cannot find proper job, they will easily to pray or to cheat it to these countries. And you know, how do these scams work? Can you kind of describe the the way that they tend to kind of proceed step by step? Normally, they will send um send from um some social media aid. They do know that there are some overseas jobs and uh, they can provide a high salary and uh, you don't need to pay anything in advice. The second method is that your friend, uh, maybe your university friend who you haven't contacted for like four or five years, uh, suddenly approach you on social media saying, hey, I'm working in Cambodia. The life is so great. And maybe you want to come with me here like because you're my good buddy back in uni. So I'm happy to just give you this special offer and I will pay for your flat ticket. Just come and visit me. Sometimes um, people say like some fake romance. Someone um, ask, ask you to be their friend via internet. They will treat you as well. So the victims, in a sense, become the perpetrators by kind of inviting more people to come. Yes, and they are very close friends sometimes. How can you know a normal person tell if a job opportunity like this could be a trap? If a company approach you and they cannot even say very clearly what's the company name, or if they say the name but they cannot show any document to prove themselves as a legit company, then most likely there's something wrong here. If for some job, if they told you a lot, uh, you don't need to have some interview. You just come to work with us and we will pay you some uh, high salary. And uh, no pressure. You don't need to pay anything in advance. Okay, that would be the fact job. If you don't know your full schedule, so for example, if you cannot e actually even say where is the company located, what's the office, what's the address number that you're going to actually end up, then this is also really, really risky. Make sure that your family members or the close friends around you know where you are going. If you find yourself in this situation and you realize perhaps too late that, uh, you know, this has been a scam and that you've been tricked, what can you do then? Yeah, make sure you don't report it to the local police. 
I don't want to say this, but there's too many cases that victims, they report to the local police and being sold again immediately. So um, make sure that you don't contact local police unless you are 100% sure this person is trustworthy. Try to reach out to sources that you can rely on. For example, people that you know, they are conducting rescue operations. Uh, you can also contact the Taiwanese authority or maybe your home country authorities, but just make sure that you only contact people that you can 100% trust. And when you are trying to reach out, make sure that you know exactly which building you are, the building name, the company name, which floor and which dormitory, dormitory numbers that you are in, because without all this information, it's very, very hard to rescue you. What can the government do to stop this kind of thing from happening? I think the most uh, important thing is to raise awareness and to prevent uh, Taiwanese from being duped into the same situation. The victims are, are tens of thousands. It will be super, super difficult to see the whole crime being ended, let's say next week or next month. It will take a little bit of time. The victims who are being scammed, they are citizens of, let's say, UK, US and, and other European countries. So the governments of these countries, honestly, there's also an interest of protecting your own citizens uh, from losing those money to the criminals. So I would say some collaborations between the Taiwanese government with other governments is a potential way to tackle the crime. Honestly, everybody can fall into the trap. I I can confidently say, like, even myself, if you give me the right, uh, you know, like, rhetoric, you come to trick me, you, you make sure like everything's set up properly. I may also fall in this kind of crime, all of us can. And it's not only limited to people who are from a certain background. Right now in Taiwan, there's a lot of victim blaming. Um, victim blaming to those people who uh, lost their money and to those people who came back from Cambodia, Myanmar. And this is really not healthy. It's important that we really focus on our, like all the blames on the, on the um, criminals and, and not those victims. So, so to answer your question, yes, everybody can fall into those kind of traps.